Hello and welcome to Inside the Women of Denver, where we talk to local leaders about their successes, failures, and lessons learned on the journey to success. I'm Crystal Covington, and today I'm talking with Suzanne Kahn, an inspirational woman who's on a personal mission to help women build the confidence they need to take powerful leaps toward their dreams. Suzanne, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, I'm really excited. Thank you. I remember the very first time we met, you had an inspirational story about how you got here, some of the journey that you went through and the things that you had considered in moving to Colorado. Why don't you start by telling us a little bit about that story and some of the big, big inspirational leaps you made. I had, um, was working for Corporate World and I just had my first grandchild. I didn't have, my son had the first grandchild. And <laughs> I decided to, that living in California, I wasn't gonna be able to see him very often. So I decided, you know what? I think I'm gonna see about coming out to Colorado. But since it's my daughter-in-law, I wasn't sure how she was gonna to react to me offering to come out. Mm -hmm. So I sent an email to my son, very professional since that's what I did, very, you know, the pros and cons, why I should come out there. Really nice long email and figured, okay, well, they'll get the email and he'll talk to her and they'll probably get back to me in about three days or so. I figured in a few days or whatever. And um, so I you know, sent it off and everything and I remember just turning around and boom, got an email right back in about Woo! 30 seconds. They were waiting for you. <laughs> and the only thing my son said was, when can I get there? <laughs> and I went, okay, I'm going. So I decided to just really pack up 13 boxes. That's it. Shipped off 13 boxes, shipped my car, moved here in about three weeks and left everything else in California. And when I got here, um, my grandson was about four months old and it's just been an incredible journey taking care of him and I watch him every day and it's probably the best thing I've ever done in my life. Wow. And having a grandchild oh, is just fantastic. <laughs> so I came here knowing no one. Yeah. And I looked up to see if I could about meeting some women to start, you know, getting out there. And we I came to, to Women of Denver, <laughs> got lost coming to the first <laughs> meeting. I was 45 minutes late and I kept saying to myself, I'm going to turn back. I'm just, I'm just going to go home. Forget it. I'm just not going to, just not going to go. And then I said, you know, something's driving me. And I went, met Crystal. And since then, it's just been great. And I've been following her and coming to as many meetings as I can and have an amazing time. So it's been a great journey. And inspiring people along the way. It's trying to. To be brave. <laughs> to be brave and take that step out of their comfort zone. Yes. So you figure I knew no one. I knew two and a half people, my son, my daughter-in-law, and my grandson. <laughs> and left a very good paying job. No thought, no even think twice about it. That's it. Yeah. I just, bye, and came out here and started a whole new thing. That's pretty much it. Yeah, absolutely. You had a great story. I really enjoyed um, getting to know that story about you because it's so, it's not often <laughs> that people just up and leave what they had going on and take the big leap to do something that they feel is the most important thing for them. And so that's inspiration. And I've never lived any place other than California, so. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that part. <laughs> Beautiful. So tell me, I know you've been through a lot of different career transitions. You've done, I mean, you're in a, uh, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, equestrian trainer. Yes, did that for about oh 15 years. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. So share a few stories from some of the most interesting moments in your career. I mean, you've, so in, in terms of uh, training people and really being a leader. Um, I got it back into the equestrian world um, when my daughter was about two years old and actually I put her on a horse at the age of two and I was fortunate enough to be um, at a facility that the lady that owned it really took a liking to me and she liked how I rode and she just liked who I was, <coughs> excuse me, who I was and so she trained me to be a trainer and so I learned from a Swedish, the Swedish Olympic trainer, Wow! so I learned dressage which is like figure skating on horseback. Wow. And uh, <laughs> that was just fantastic. But what I took with the dr dressage is that I really enjoyed working with beginners or people that had a fear of riding. Instead of working with the, you know, the higher up people and everything else, I really enjoyed working with children and beginners. 
because when they're just starting out and they just, you know, I didn't care how long it took, if I had to just walk with by their side for weeks for them to get the confidence to take that first step, that first time the hot horse would trot or the first time that horse would canter, it was exhilarating. I just got chills by saying that. And um, that was so rewarding. And just watching the kids or even an adult who was afraid, seeing them conquer that fear and be able to go the next level and to see them working, you know, you got a 1,500 pound animal that you're doing. Ooh. And my daughter became an excellent rider. She still rides. Um, but I had such enjoyment working um, for so many years in the business. I trained um, high school, the teams in high school. I trained um, kids with disabilities. And I also would love to take care of a horse that was injured oh. because it took a lot of patience. And I've been told I have a lot of patience. You do. So <laughs> that to me was so rewarding to have that chance to be able to do that in something you love. And it's definitely a passion of mine is to be with the horses. So right now, like if I'm driving on the road and a trailer goes by, I have to roll down the window <laughs> so I can <laughs> smell it. <laughs> in fact, I was just at a fundraiser just a few weeks ago for horses and uh, had a wonderful time. And it was just giving back, you know, and trying to help horse rescue horses. So it's a really good thing to be able to have something that you care so much about. And mm -hmm. I really enjoy working with people that are a little nervous and getting them confident and excited and feeling good about it. So it was just great. I did that for a long time. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. I love that you even love the, you love it so much, you love the scent of yeah. being around. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, that's I know. That's huge. <laughs> yeah, so share some of the most transformational moments that you've had um, in your career, in some of the big changes that you've had uh, 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 over the course of your life. What are some of your big transformational aha moments that you've learned from? Well, it would be from the horse world. Um, I was training um, a woman's daughter and granddaughter who was um, the owner of a subway development office and restaurants. And she decided that she would like me to come work for her because she th loved how I trained and worked with people. I knew nothing about the restaurant business. I knew nothing about <laughs> any of it at all. And in fact, I think I'd only been in a rest subway restaurant a few times. And um, I decided, um, I really had a lot of, I really liked her and she was um, actually a very special person to me and still is. And so I decided to take a leap and leave the horse world and go into working with Subway. And I did that for quite a long time and I trained people, I opened restaurants, and I actually decided um, after a few months of being in the business to change a little bit of the philosophy because what they would do is they would teach the franchisees or the managers and they weren't the ones that are really doing the work. Yeah, It was the kids that were doing the work and some of them it was their first jobs. So what I did is I started teaching the kids, back into teaching the kids, I love it. <laughs> and I would have 60, 70 ki young kids come to a class and I would have them for a good hour and we would do, you know, I would teach them food safety and the procedures to follow. But what I did also, which I, was so rewarding, is I gave them a sense of pride. Yeah. That they're here, they're coming to a corporate class and here I am teaching them. And when they would leave, they would get a certificate from me because they would have to take a test and everybody would pass. Mm -hmm. and, I would, and I would tell them, for the rest of your life, you can say you took a class, a corporate class, and you passed it. And this is something you can take on your, put on your resumes. And the kids would beam. They would just like, oh, wow. <laughs> and I would go into the restaurants to be evaluating the restaurants at times, and even the franchisees, which used to make me feel so good and warm my heart, they would say to me, oh my God, all I hear is, Suzanne said to do it this way. Suzanne wow. said you're supposed to do it this way. <laughs> Suzanne said this. You made an impact. I made an impact on some wow. kid, young kids. And some of them even stayed longer, which would help the franchisees with turnover. Mm -hmm. So it was a win-win situation all the way around. And I got to be known for, everybody wanted me to come and teach them. Come up, you know, I'd travel all the time. I would drive sometimes 2,000 miles a month. Ooh. And um, they would want me to come just give their, their store specifically extra training and every, you know, all the time. And of course I would say yes to every, all the time and loved it. And I actually miss it. I do enjoy making that um, lasting impression on someone, you know, and especially when they're so 
impressionable. Mm -hmm. And giving that feeling that what they're doing is important also. Yeah. You know, it's not just they're just coming to work. You know, they, they felt good about it. And I did a lot of customer service work. And they don't know customer service. So they got a lot out of it, and customer service would improve. And I would tell them, you know, you smile and you say hello, and I would give examples, and I'd be in the restaurant and show them. And you demonstrated. I demonstrated, yeah. yeah. And they would just crack up because I could make someone, I wish to tell them, try to make that person's day. Wow. And That's a beautiful philosophy. Yeah. And so it would be really cute. They would do their best. <laughs> it was really sweet. So I, I definitely. Think, yeah, there's two really big lessons in there. The first one is when you said, that you had never done that before. Right. And that's something that women, we do not often do. We're always looking for something that we've always done. You know, we don't apply for that job because, well, I haven't done that before. I don't think I qualify. And you actually went for something that you hadn't done, you weren't quite sure about, and right. you took on that challenge. I took that step out of my comfort zone. Yes. And I seem to do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but you always get something for it. And it's, yeah. even, it's, even though I was scared and nervous and had to learn so much, mm -hmm. I got so many more rewards. Yes. So it's just believing in yourself. Even though you're scared and you got those butterflies, just take that first step. That's all you gotta do is take that first step. Yes. And, so. and I also love the fact that you take things that are given to you and you transform them into something that works for you. Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, I, I have a lot of passion, and so whatever I approach or whatever I get involved in, I give it wholeheartedly. I mean, I'll give 150% of myself, mm -hmm. and it's that passion that drives me. And I always want to make the person feel better or feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want anybody to ever feel less. So if I can make them feel better, then I'll do whatever it takes. I don't care. So I, I guess I do do that too. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great thing. So now I want to hear about some of your mentors. Who has been a great mentor in your life? I've had two very strong women. One was my original um, trainer from when I started in the horse world. Her name was Lillian and she was from Sweden and she just took me on and just, she used to compliment me and, and just would make me feel that I could do it no matter what. And I had never ridden dressage before. I was a Western cowgirl. I used to barrel race. <laughs> so learning dressage, which was very formal and very precise, was definitely new to me. And she just made me feel that I could do it no matter what. And she, she's the one that actually said to me, you need to be a trainer. You're going to be yeah. a trainer. And I had never even thought of that before. I went, OK. I didn't even think twice. She said I could do it. And I said, OK, no problem. That's good trust. Yeah. You really trusted her I instinct. did trust her. And the other one would be Brenda, who wanted me to come to work for Subway. She had been there for me in many different ways, um, personal and business-wise, gave me great advice, taught me a lot about the business and life, and I still keep in contact with her, um, and she still gives me good advice. Um, but she was one of those people that was really one of those strong women and didn't always spoke her mind, and I was a little bit more, you know, <laughs> standoffish. Reserved. Yeah. Right, reserved. Got a lot better about that. <laughs> because she, again, she gave me the confidence to say, you know what, you can do this. Just take that chance. Just take that step. Wow. And I never wanted to disappoint her. So I kept on going no matter what. And learned and learned and learned and learned. And so those are my two probably strongest people that were mentoring me. Wow, that's incredible. Those are great <laughs> mentors. Um, what about inspiration? Tell me a little bit about what's been inspiring you lately. What are some things that you're doing right now that make you feel just really like you're in your zone, you're in your space? Well, since I'm still new to Denver, it's, has, it's only been a little over a year, and I do spend a lot of time with my grandson. I'm not out meeting a lot of people. And for a while, I was kind of stuck and not really meeting anybody. And I kind of was bothering me. And it's, it's kind of hard sometimes for me to get to meetings in the afternoons and things. So I was kind of like, OK, I've got to do something. I've got to do something. And then all of a sudden, I met this lady. And all of a sudden, I met all these other ladies. And um, we spend, uh, I've actually been spending a lot of time with them. So I've been meeting all these new people. 
and getting to learn all about their lives. And they, everybody has a great story, always has good stories. And it made me start to feel better again that I'm, you know, I'm not so isolated maybe a little yeah, bit. Yeah, the connection. And it getting back into some more connections and learning again from other people. I learn from something from everybody all the time. Yes. In which I, I value that and I enjoy that. So um, it got me back out there and got me feeling a little bit more connected and a little bit more, you know, able to share my story and, you know, share what I'm doing and things like that. So. I would say just basically meeting new people, which I don't have a problem meeting new people. It's just getting that connection yeah. with people. So what is your favorite way to connect? I know a lot of people, I think that um, sometimes when we go to meet people, we don't always understand what it means to connect or how to do that. What are your favorite ways to really make that deeper connection and feel like you've really gotten to know someone? I've always been a person that tries to look at someone in their eye when I meet them. And I actually even like to shake their hands mm -hmm. because then you get an immediate connection. So when I meet new people, I, I'm, a, I'm a friendly person anyways. I like to say good morning, you know, have a good day, just because you don't know, maybe they just need to hear something nice. Yeah. Um, but I like to give eye contact. I try to do that and like I said, you know, give that first impression and shake their hand or, and try to make it for them to understand if they're talking to me that I'm actually listening. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just, you know, looking at them and, you know, not really paying attention. Sometimes that happens, but I definitely try not to, I try to give that positive feedback immediately. Yeah. So that they know that, hey, you know what, very nice to meet you. And I try to do that too, actually. After I've met someone, I try to say, nice to meet you. Uh-huh. So you give them the connection that you're looking to receive, it yes. sounds like. Nice. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love how you explain it so much better. Oh, yeah. I'm just a repeater. I'm like, oh, you did this. I translate everything. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, so, Suzanne, what are some of the biggest lessons that you want everybody watching this to take from you today? Don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone. And don't be afraid to follow your dreams. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that sounds easier than it really is because you're going to have pitfalls. Everybody has them. But if you make a mistake, you just got to keep going. That's, I mean, everybody makes mistakes. And if you don't make mistakes, your life is too dull. But taking that step, even no matter what it is, just don't give up. Just keep trying. And something will come from it, no matter what it is. So you will get something out of it. And just keep reaching for the stars. I know it sounds kind of corny, but it's exciting. Just reach for the stars and reach for your dreams. And yeah. they will come. It will happen. Incredible. <laughs> you are just full of wisdom. I don't know about that, but. <laughs> you are. <laughs> well, I'm glad I got to sit and chat with you. And I appreciate all of the time you spent sharing the, the great experiences that you've had in your life, especially with Equestrian, which is really, really awesome. <laughs> I just had an amazing time just learning more from your stories and learning more about your experiences with horses and Equestrian. Mm -hmm. You are an incredible woman. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you much for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. Thank you for watching Inside the Women of Denver with me, Crystal Covington, and my guest, Suzanne Kahn. Always remember that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known.